Welcome to the Haunted 365, and in this video we're going to be making a severed zombie hand using a Dollar Tree skeleton hand. These Dollar Tree skeleton hands are not bad, but they're kind of cheesy on their own. And more importantly, they're just completely flat. They have absolutely no character at all. So our first thing we're going to do is see if we can actually get this thing to articulate. Because as it is, it's just kind of in a constant state of giving you a high five. We wanted to make it look a little more natural and kind of creepy. We're going to accomplish this by actually bending the hand at the knuckle joint in the opposite direction that we want to go. And it should just snap just like that. And if you get a finger like this where it wants to kind of blow out on the side seam right here don't worry too much about that. And for the next step, using a new really sharp razor knife, I'm just going to go on the back side where I've split it right here. Remember, this is the top of the hand, this is the bottom. We cut everything to bend the wrong direction. So now I'm going to take the razor knife and remove a little bit of material carefully trying not to cut myself, of course. You should do the same. We're just gonna go through and remove some of this material behind where we made that cut. So now there's actually gonna be a little more room for it to bend backwards. And I'll just keep hacking away at it until it bends back the amount that I want. Now that is a little better. And I'm going to go through and use that same process on all of the rest of the joints that I have split now. If you have a finger break all the way completely off, it's not the end of the world. That's what hot glue is for, and we're going to be hot gluing this stuff back together anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Now, taking a look at the back side of the hand, I want at least maybe a, a couple of the middle fingers to be able to lift up that way, which as it is right now, this is completely rigid. So what I'm going to do is flip this to the underside and make a couple cuts along this way, separating the fingers. I'll need to hit those same spots from this side as well. Getting it all the way down to that joint right there. All right, and from the underside, I'm going to make a cut across this joint and this joint right here. And that way these two fingers should be separate. And that's all I'm going to do to those. Already, it's starting to look a little better because it's actually got some character to it now. Of course, I still have to address the amputated digit. All right, now that we've made all the cuts to where it's now flexible to get it to hold in place the way we want it, 
We're just going to take trusty hot glue and glob it on right there, right all over the joint, and then just hold it shut. Put a little more on there, spread it around for good measure. And then the exciting portion starts of sitting here and holding it and waiting. You can always check to see how the hot glue is coming along. Just give it a touch. It shouldn't be sticky anymore and the heat should be gone out of it. This is still slightly tacky and a little warm, so I'm going to continue to hold it for about another 30 seconds or so. All right, now that the hot glue is dry, it's now holding that shape, which is exactly what we want. We'll just move on to the next joint. Apply some hot glue. Start to smash it. And then position it however you want it. And then continue to wait some more. And then just continue going along and bending and hot gluing wherever you see fit. You can put this in whatever position you think looks best. And now to deal with that finger that we lost, or the part of the finger that we lost, I'm just going to glob up a bunch of glue here and then just quickly stick that guy right back on there. Which also, if you really wanted to, you could actually articulate this thing by doing that to all the finger joints and just cutting all the fingers off at the joint and gluing them back together the way that you want them. Take a little longer, but you could still achieve some uh, pretty good results that way as well. You would just have to make sure that uh, you kept all of your digits in order so you weren't mixing and matching parts because that could look a a little weird and certainly not anatomically correct. All right, and that already looks immensely better. It likes to sit in a more natural position now and not all stiff and stuck out like that. It actually has a more natural look. So now we're just going to go on to corpsing, which for that all we're going to need is some toilet paper, some liquid latex, and a chip brush to apply it with. All right, I got my toilet paper, my liquid latex, the hand is ready to go, and I've got my trusty chip brush. And it's best to use toilet paper that doesn't have any sort of quilted pattern or anything like that on there, but in this case, it's not gonna matter that much because we are really gonna soup up the uh, liquid latex on here and make it extra thick. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and kind of put a little base coat down here for my first piece to stick to so it's not all over the place. And then I'll just lay down the toilet paper and then start dabbling that with the liquid latex. And I'm going to double this up right here to make it extra thick and I'm not being delicate with this I'm really jabbing the brush in there now for these fingers I do the same thing I'm gonna give it a little coat of the latex so that way the toilet paper kind of stays where I want it and then I'm gonna do my best wrap this around there. If it gets wrinkly and all bunched up, not a big deal at all. That will just add more detail and character to the piece when we go back and do our paint job. And yes, you are going to make a bit of a mess with the latex, but that's just a fact. It's easy to get off your hands once it dries. You just roll it up like a glue booger, and then it comes right off. If 
Just make sure that you're getting all this toilet paper completely flattened out with no big air pockets in it. And no dry spots. And you will eventually get to the point where you have to stop and let what you've already done dry because you're not going to have any place left to hold on to it without you know of course messing up the work that you've already done any spots that are bare you can always just rip off little pieces and go back and get those covered up and now before this actually starts to dry I'm going to take just the back half of my brush here, the back end of it, and I'm going to make some holes in this toilet paper here and there. And let the bone show through. Just be careful not to completely overdo it because then it loses its effect. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, which is gonna take a while, so I'll probably put a fan blowing on this to help speed things along. And then I'll come back, flip it over, do the bottom half and this last finger because it was the only thing I had left to hold on to to move this thing around. All right, what we've done so far is dry, so I can actually handle it now and finish off this last finger and get the bottom side finished off. Alright, now I'm going to let that dry and move on to the next step. Now for this next part, I'm going to be making some stuff that is actually in industry terms called a nerney. And I'm just going to brush on some latex onto a slick surface that it will peel easily off of. And I'm going to roll these up after they dry and use them as like hanging skin pieces of, you know, just flesh and tissue. Just make sure you do this on a slick, non-porous surface so that way after these dry, they'll be easy to peel up. The hand isn't totally dry yet, but I've decided to do another little extra step here. And I'm just taking some cotton ball and tearing off pieces and kind of fluffing it out like that a little bit. And then I'm gonna just soak it in the latex. and then place it on this back part of the hand here because it's very, just much a clean cut and I want to be able to kind of mangle that up a little bit and the cotton does a good job of kind of bulking it out somewhat. And with putting this latex cotton on here, the nastier the better. Now I'm going to use the pointy back part of one of these really cheap disposable uh, model brushes and just try to kind of make a, a hole or at least an indention in this center part a little bit. And all these little pieces that are coming off of it is exactly what we want. The whole idea is we're trying to create a look where like this hand was ripped off and not cut off with precision. So now there's more of a three-dimensional look going on here on the end. Alright, now that everything's dry we can start to peel these up and then you basically just kind of wad it up 
is that latex has a tendency to just always want to stick to itself. You can just pull on it and mess with it and make it all look gnarledy. I can just kind of rip this one into a couple pieces or several to make some smaller stuff. I can also direct my attention over here to all my drippings from corpsing the hand and pull these little chunks up too because they're even more messed up looking because they're totally unintentional so half the work is done for you the little drips and things like that I mean if you needed to you could always roll those up into little snake pieces and have them sticking somewhere but now we are going to attach all these things to the back of the hand and make it look really gross all right, and the quickest method to get this stuff attached is the good old trusty glue gun. But you can also just take pieces and stick them to the latex because it inherently wants to stick to itself. So that way you can kind of take a look at what you have without having to commit to anything. And I kind of like this. So I'm gonna just pull that back off. Hit it with some glue. And then stick it right back in there. So now it's starting to look more vascular and tissue and tendons and things just hanging out of the backside, which is exactly what we want. All right, now I have this piece here which I like this little dangly thing, but I don't really need all the rest of it. So I'm just gonna pull this part off that I want. Put a little glob of glue here and get this stuck in there. So you can definitely see where we're going with this. And this is definitely gonna be one case to where I'm not gonna bother pulling any of these little glue strings off of there I'm just gonna leave them and hopefully they actually stay there and just add to the creepy gory effect so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and mix up my base color and what I'm using is just this is just regular old uh, latex house paint nothing special just stuff you can go get from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever uh, what I normally do is buy just this small sample portions from Lowe's and then uh, I water this down about a third with just straight old tap water uh, so it's thin enough to go through an airbrush but this is what I'm going to use here too. So I'm just going to squirt some of this out there. And since I'm not actually going for black I'm going for more of a, a gray color and just a little bit of fleshiness to it. I'm gonna hit that with some white. And I'm just gonna use the back side of one of these disposable brushes to kind of mix that up a bit. Now just to liven this gray color up a little bit, I have some uh, kind of a flesh tone color that I found and keep adding it as I need to, just to get it to just a little more of an, I guess a natural gray tone, if that makes any sense, a natural, we're going for a dark zombie gray. We'll just leave it at that. All right, that's a pretty decent color. So now time to get dirty. And we are just gonna go ahead and base out the body of this in this gray color. I'm going to be careful to try to avoid 
these open areas that I've left because they will get addressed later. If you get a little where you don't want it, it's not a big deal. You can just use your finger and wipe it off. And I'm not actually going for perfect coverage here. You'll see why in just a second. All right. Now I'm just going to take some watered up paper towel and I'm just going to go through and block this. I'm not rubbing because I don't want to remove it all. I just want to lessen it. Now it's starting to starting to come together, starting to kind of look like something, but I'm going to put a fan on this and let it dry for a few minutes so that way I can go on with the next step. All right, now that that coat is dry, I'm just going to put out some straight black acrylic. And I'm going to dry brush the whole thing. I'm actually really going to try to get a lot of this paint out of there. I'm not looking to just uh, hit high spots like you normally would with dry brushing. I'm actually going to really try to grind it in there and get kind of even coverage over the whole thing. I'm going to come back with a paper towel and wipe over that. It's just starting to add a little bit of dimension to everything. And just keep wiping and rubbing until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. And once again, I'm trying to avoid these open bone areas the best I can. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now we are gonna move on to the next step. All right, now using one of these small disposable brushes, I'm gonna go into the straight black acrylic and this time I'm not going to be doing any dry brushing. I'm just going to try to actually get a fair amount of black paint down in here. Because this is going to provide all of like the darker, more shadow colors down inside all of this mess. So when we go back and put highlights on it, they'll really pop out. Make sure you get all the little doodads. All right, doesn't have to be perfect and that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna move on and actually do the final dry brushing over the, the whole body of the hand here to put the highlights in. And for that, I'm just gonna squeeze out a little pile of acrylic white over here. And I'm going to go into that with that same dirty brush that I just got through using for everything. So that way it'll kind of dull down the white a little bit. Uh, kind of blot off the excess. And then just very lightly start hitting the highlights. And is usually the case with me, I like to finish stuff like this off with just a little glaze coat of stark white, just with a small brush with a lot stiffer bristles, and it just kind of puts the icing on everything and really makes the details pop out. It's 
pretty nice and dry and I'm just barely going to touch over everything. If you enjoy these videos, you can really help the channel out a great deal just with four easy clicks of the mouse. One, to make sure you click that subscribe button. Two, to hit the thumbs up button. Three, make sure you hit the notification bell so that way YouTube lets you know whenever I post a new video. And three, hit the share button and share your favorite video onto whatever social media platform you prefer. Those things can help the channel out and help it grow exponentially. And a big thank you to all of my current subscribers. Now to get these exposed bone details to really stick out, I'm going to go back to this little bitty art brush and back into this straight black acrylic. And I'm just going to try to get it down in there just to hit the edges of the opening. Alright, and from there I'm going to go into some straight crimson red. And I'm going to use that as my highlight color. Just to add a bit of freshness to all the kind of mummified decay we got going on here. looking pretty good pretty gory I like it now we're really gonna go to town with this crimson paint down here on the end making some really bright highlights but I'm being careful not to really jab the bristles down in so deep that they're covering up all that black that I put down before Now, we just need to get our doodads good and gory. And to add just a little bit of extra grossness, I'm going to put out just a small amount of this latex flesh color. I'm going for a basically a pinkish flesh tone kind of deal. And I'm just going to hit that here and there. Which definitely makes everything in here look a, a little deeper and definitely grosser. And now I would say with that, we have a finished hand. So until the next video, keep it creepy.